Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my review of the Mercure Big Eye Chronograph. Now, I'd like to declare my bias at the very beginning of the video. I'm a total sucker for this neo retro look. Fotina on the hands means I'm putty in the hands, and I think this little watch is gorgeous. Gorgeous, but not quite perfect. Now, you saw the pop up, I'm sure. This watch was sent to me by the Mercure Mercure official store on AliExpress, no less. I will leave a link to their store in the description of the video. I'll also leave a link to the Mercure website and I will leave a third link to a Kickstarter campaign that they have running currently for a green dialed version of this watch with a bezel. This is the bezel-less version that I've got here today. Now I will circle back to all of that a little bit later on in the video. I think Mercure are a really interesting brand and one with huge potential. A Chinese company that seems determined to do things differently. They don't always get it right, they're always different, but not necessarily always right. The watch, however, like I said, is a little stunner. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Now, before I get into the review today, I want to show you something rather unusual that happens every time I bring this watch's box underneath the camera lens. <laughs> Weird, eh? Yeah, like I said, Mercure are different, but different isn't always entirely successful. What on earth is going on with the Italian themed travel pouch here? I have absolutely no idea. If it was the French flag, I would kind of get the oblique reference, but it isn't the French flag. Anyway, it is nicely packaged. 250, these are about $220 if you can catch it on an AliExpress sale. You'd expect some decent packaging. Inside we have a Mercure branded polishing cloth large and fairly unnecessary instruction manual and a proper signed dated warranty card, not something you always get with a Chinese watch. But what a gorgeous, gorgeous little piece this is. As I said, I'm a total sucker for this vintage military look, the kind of Fotina as well. So perhaps it's no surprise that I have been all over this one since it landed here in Sydney in December. Not necessarily credit to Mercure though, this one is a Breguet Type 20 homage with a couple of twists. Now it's not a direct one for one, you can see they have kind of mixed up a few general vintage military cues, there's the triangle at 12, there's that broad arrow crow's foot suggesting that it's a British issue military watch just above the index at 6. And the subdials at the 3 and 9 aren't entirely the same as the Breguet, but yeah, there's no mistake in this one. That's where they've drawn inspiration, particularly the big eye, particularly the fact that the chrono timer on the right, the 3 o'clock sub-register, is larger than the ticking second hand on the left. But hey, that is no bad thing by me because the Breguet was gorgeous and this Mercure is gorgeous as a consequence. Now the Breguet Type 20 and its successors, oddly enough called the Breguet Type 21 and the Breguet Type 22, were issued to the French Navy Air Division from the early 1950s onwards. And unlike the Fliegers of the Second World War, which were sometimes 55 millimeters in diameter, these were specifically smaller than the specification stipulated 38 millimeters in diameter, which this Mercure shares. Now this one is 15 mil thick, but do not worry about that because it doesn't wear like a big thick watch. 46 and a half lug to lug though, because it has relatively long lugs for its small size. 18 millimeter lug width, as is tradition on these smaller chronos. There is a bit of taper on this leather strap down to 16 at the clasp. And on the supply leather strap, this one weighs in at 63 grams. I love this size of watch. I love this style of watch. It really suits my seven inch wrist, average size wrist, as you will see a bit later on. So 316L stainless steel case, crown and pushers. This one has 50 meters of water resistance from a push pull crown. And keeping the vintage theme, that is a piece of acrylic crystal. As such, you get lovely flecto from this one. You'll see that from the outdoor shots, the wrist shots later on, and so on. You get a real warmth from an acrylic crystal that you don't get from a sapphire. That does come with a downside though. They are easy to scratch. Bit of poly watch though, usually buffs them back into pretty much the shape that they arrived in, cheaply and easily. As noted, 18 millimeter lug width. Now I don't have an awful lot of 18 mil lug width straps in my collection, so I'm delighted to see that this is a good one. Very, very wearable. I think that tonally perfectly matches the black dial and those 14 at hands and indices. And it has some nice high polished buckle and tang with Pierre Paul in on it. I thought this was a Mercure. More on that later. So Chinese made 38 millimeter retro military chrono. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Seagull ST1901. 
and your right. That means one push of the top pusher to start the chrono. 30 minute chrono timer is the big eye register there at the three o'clock. Constantly ticking second hand over there is the slightly smaller register at the nine o'clock. Now power reserve on this movement is around 40 hours. If you leave the chrono running, it will just keep running 30 minutes after 30 minutes after 30 minutes. You're likely to bring it down to about 30 hours of power reserve, 22 joules with this one, and it does not hack one push to stop and one push to reset. It's a column wheel chrono. It's pretty much the only mechanical chronograph that you're gonna get in a watch for less than about $600. And it is a cracking movement to look at. Oh, they've put a solid case back on it. It is a rather nice looking solid case back and I do mean solid, it has a certain amount of heft to it. Perhaps that's also a reason why it has 50 meters of water resistance rather than the 30 I would have expected from a Seagull 1963 for example. But one of the best bits about this movement is looking at it and you can't look at it, which is a bit of a disappointment. But I am certainly not disappointed by how this watch looks, I think it just looks fantastic. All printed dial, now it's matte black so it doesn't reflect and there's no sunburst here, it simply doesn't need it. Applied in indices with that beautiful Fotina, the triangle up there at 12, and pronounced indices on the minute track around the outer edge at the 12 and the 6 and the 3 and the 9. They're all in Fotina, as are the five minute markers on the chrono register over there at the three o'clock. Everything else is just printed in white. The Mercure logo, I think they've done that rather well, quite subtle in a kind of ghostly gray silver. It doesn't really stand out at all. It's certainly not offensive, which is always a bit of a danger with these retro watches done by small Chinese brands. And there is just a touch of color here as well on the very tip of that chrono hand and on the chrono sub register hand. Talking of sub registers and hands, if I take the macro lens really in towards the dial. You can see some concentric circle work. Those two sub registers are slightly recessed. You barely notice that with the naked eye though. And they've done something slightly unusual with the hour hand. They've cut the tip off it. Not quite sure why they've done that. They've squared it off. Certainly that wasn't the case on the Breguet Type 20. I'm not sure why they chose to differentiate this one in that manner, but there you go. And let's just have one more look at that delicious acrylic. It really does play with the light beautifully. It's a soft light you get from an acrylic crystal as well, not harsh bounce back like you do with Sapphire. Totally in keeping with the watch and I love it. And there's actually a reasonable amount of loom on this watch and it's not awful. They've gone for that old radium style so it has that lovely deep green color on the hands, the indices, that big triangle at 12 and also on the chrono register at three o'clock but they haven't loomed the chrono hand. Oh, how many times have I said oh no over the course of this video? If I turn the speed up on this, you can see by the time you get to 10 minutes, which I reckon is about two to three hours of human eye equivalent, it's looking ropey. By the time you get to 20 minutes, you can barely make out the hands. But any looms a bonus on this, especially in that old radium style. But get it on wrist and all of those O's become an O. I think it looks fantastic. Like I said, 15 mil, but do not worry about that at all. A lot of that is from that domed acrylic crystal and it doesn't wear like a tubby little watch, particularly at 63 grams. And yeah, it's a nice strap. It looks really good and it's very, very comfortable straight out the box. No need to go searching for an 18 mil lug width strap. This is a good one. An overhead legibility is actually excellent because of those big white hands against the black dial. Acrylic Crystal doesn't have any anti-reflective, but you get that lovely warm glow. So yeah, it's pretty good overall. Pretty good in natural light as well. No anti-reflective, but because they're acrylic, sometimes it doesn't look like there's glass there at all. You get a nice clear read on that dial. You also get some nice distortion from the edges of the viewing angle as well. On wrist, it's a small watch at 38 mil with 18 mil lug width. That can be a little bit toy-like, but it doesn't feel like that at all. The strap is actually quite thick in itself and the 50 mil thickness of the watch helps bulk it up a little bit, but it still only weighs 63 grams. And the pocket shot to finish, I thought I would wear some suitably military drab green with this one. Great sizing for me and for anybody who likes a slightly smaller than average watch. But by this stage in the review, the moans and niggles section has pretty much written itself, hasn't it? These slightly bizarre and unrelated packaging color choice. 
the mismatched hardware, Pierre Paul Anne being another brand within the Mercure stable. The closed case back, meaning you can't see one of this watch's standout features, and the slightly too short and very unloomed chrono hand. And then there's the Kickstarter thing. Like I said, I'll leave a link to this current Kickstarter campaign for a bezeled version of this watch in the description of the video. The one I just showed you, the bezel-less version, also started life as a Kickstarter 12 months ago. Now, the early burns back then were $220, which is pretty much what you can buy it for during a sale on AliExpress at the moment. I don't think Mercure have quite understood the point of a Kickstarter campaign. It's to get as much money as you can in advance by offering prices that will never be repeated. Like I said, I don't quite think they've thought this one through end to end and there are a number of little details that could do with a revision. But I'll be honest, None of these things are deal breakers. I can forgive this watch all of its little idiosyncrasies, even in its current form, because it is gorgeous. If you've already got a Seagull 1963 in your collection, so you're into this size and you're familiar with the movement, but you're looking for something a bit different, you should definitely consider this one. Or if the Seagull 1963 has never quite resonated with you, this certainly offers a less polarizing look. And it's a look I very much appreciate. So there you have it, the Mercure Big Eye, stunning little watch if you like this look, one best bought on sale, and one that could probably do with a version 2.0, just to iron out a few of those kinks. If this one isn't your bag, then I'm obviously going to suggest the Seagull 1963, or why not check out the Vintro, the only automatic version of that Seagull movement that I've encountered so far. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.